Well, I've made a decision over the last day or two because I feel I've been giving myself a bit too much stick. We've had problems with both saved when we've been in English football and over on Twitch as well, with English football maybe being a bit easy in FM24. But I've decided that I'm going to embrace it and enjoy it. We'll have fun challenges on the way. But for now, we are overachieving with Bournemouth. And you know what? I'm proud of the way we're playing. And defensively, we're absolutely insane. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 55 of the head coach with me, Daniel. And welcome to the home of the seventh lowest scorers in the Premier League this season. Not that you'd be able to tell from our positions in the league. We've got the second best defensive record in the Premier League, but that may be tested away at Manchester City today. We then face Everton, who are also in the European places, as our good run at the start of this season continues. We've found a team that defensively, it's just unbelievable and although we're not scoring goals we're still absolutely flying so if you're looking forward to seeing how we get on today then please do put a thumbs up on the video we've got the transfer window close that will feature in the next episode we've also got a lot of results to look back on so let's go over to the schedule and see what's been happening because since you were last with me for those two brilliant 1-0 victories against top end of the table sides we've had one real off day which is a shame but three more clean sheets out of six, five of those six unbeaten. And overall, we're just so resolute. We said that when we came here and it was the big thing when we joined the club. Forget the finances, it's a solid Premier League club and the personalities across the squad are fantastic. And it's proven that way. Because if we have a look since you were last here, a 2-0 win away at Burnley, which in fairness was pretty comprehensive. Brassier got a brilliant late second after Damsgaard's early penalty. I don't really know what happened in the Palace game, we were just awful, and Dan Gore seems to be emerging as my uh, bogeyman across the saves this year. He's popped up with a big one in that game, and we were beaten pretty comfortably. However, we won 1-0 away at Leeds with a Tyler Adams goal, and defensively, yet again didn't look like conceding. And remember from the last episode, that's with Mepham injured, that's with Senesi the skipper injured, we are really depleted back there. George Rowland's the youngster play, Lillian Brassier played and we just looked like we were going to keep a clean sheet. It was a fantastic feeling to have. At home to Arsenal, we won by two goals to one. It was actually nil-nil with 10 to go and I made the changes to the 5-4-1 that I often do. Now, I went really defensive, I tried to make sure we stayed in the game and then Dom Zelanke popped up with two goals and won it for us. Havertz got a consolation in the 97th but again, just a remarkable effort. Then we were poor at Hull but got a 0-0 draw. Karnazeki went off injured quite early but Mark Steele came on and did really well. And he did the same against Leicester as well. Best performer on the pitch in a poor display overall. But Victor Sivanov got a pen. We had a couple of injuries of course but then a late 95th minute equaliser. After we'd had a warning sign earlier in stoppage time with one just ruled out for offside from the same player. Meant it was a draw but... That leaves us in fourth in the Premier League, albeit we're sliding now and some of the others are picking up, but we are in that position where I look down and think, well, at the very, very worst, we're going to finish 13th, which is objective met. And the truth is, we're probably going to finish in and around where we did last year, which is that sort of ninth or 10th position. And if we can have a slight overachievement and finish 8th, depending on what happens in the Cups, we might get a stab at Europe. So, it seems like a really good season for us. I'm delighted with how solid we are defensively. You can see the goal difference isn't great, but if I show you it, the stage is here. We've scored 21 in 17, but we've only conceded 13. Arsenal are the only team with a better defensive record. That's despite letting in too late against us. And if you look going forward, it's only really the bottom four, Sheffield United, that are worse than us. Otherwise, we're a bit of a mess to be honest so it's going to be a bit tricky if the defensive record dries up because we haven't got the goals in the team but it just seems that we've stumbled upon this brilliant tactic and while we are going to have to take gambles today we're going to have to rest everyone against City because this festive period where all the games are coming thick and fast we've played what six games already this month and we've got two more to come in the next three days so I think we'll rest everyone against City First team against Everton and then it's back to back against Brighton in Cup and League and we'll be able to rotate a few if we need to in the Cup tie. But 
I do want to have a go at a cup this season. We've not been that fortunate with the draws. But let's go and find out how we get on this time because we are going to begin the new year period with the final game of 2029. Manchester City away are the opponents. Let me very quickly show you the youth candidates because it's another poor intake on the way. If we go and get through to our team selection, as you briefly saw a moment ago, it's a very similar to original Manchester City team, albeit they've nicked the likes of Nonto, Van der Ven and a couple of others from elsewhere. But we're going to have to make big changes because we're knackered. And it might work out the other way where if the opponent doesn't rotate enough, we can take advantage with fresh legs. But it doesn't look particularly good for us. So we'll be back in a minute when we pick the team to run through our 11. Well, it's not the strongest side we're ever going to name this. But youth is getting a chance. We're seeing some fresh blood in the Premier League. And we've also got a fair few youngsters filling the bench. So depending on what situation the game's in, we can either bring on first teamers for half an hour or youngsters and just rest a few. The 11 we've gone for in full is Mark Steele, who is currently the only fit senior keeper. Roland, Sturgiu and Brassi are the back three. Mepham is returning from injury and will come on for Sturgiu for the last half an hour. We've got Burn and Reggie on the wing backs with Fernandez and youngster Aragon in midfield. Damsgaard and Veron are two out wide. Let's just switch those over actually. And then we're going to go Solanke up front on his own. Made an impact off the bench at times both this year and last but not often been a shining star from the beginning, so we'll see how he gets on today. We have got the likes of Aaron, Scott and Leonardo, if needed, by desperate measures. If not, if we're behind comfortably, or either way, if we're winning comfortably, unlikely as it'll be, then we will bring on the three youngsters instead. Let's go and get through to the Etihad, and we're kind of taking one for the team here, with the hope that it'll pay off against Everton in three days' time. It's six changes for City, who, to be fair, have gone stronger for this one, they rested a few in their last game by the looks of it. Pep's still in charge. They're in third in the league. They're doing okay. Did they win their last game? Because they rotated really heavily. Uh, no, that's our schedule. That's not going to help anyone, is it? Let's have a look at cities. They drew 0-0 at Newcastle, despite rotating quite a bit. I would imagine the likes of Haaland coming back in and Phil Foden are probably strengthening their team. So we're going to be taking a hit on this one against a fresh top-class city side. Not a good start to our new year period, but we'll finish 2029 in style by trying to hang on for a nil-nil against City. And we know what we're capable of defensively. Well, it's a corner kick here with 15 minutes gone into the back post towards the centre forward Haaland. And the rebound is in from Ruben Diaz. It is 1-0 to Manchester City. And unfortunately, that is the start of a very long afternoon, I think. They've dominated the stats, as you can see. And normally our game prides ourselves on holding out. And I'm not sure we got the quality to get back into it. Certainly not in the midfield areas. So with half an hour gone and no threat on the opposition goal, I think we consider this one a difficult day. But we knew this was the case at the start of this game. I can see Everton are playing their star striker Phil Roberts and he scored a goal against Newcastle. So hopefully this all pays off in three days time as Nonto gets in from the right. It's very hazy this one compared to normal. I know that FM24 has always been considered a little bit hazy, but this is a really different example. Very strong at the Etihad Stadium, certainly for a game at the end of December. But Manchester City dominating a game. And I say, if we don't shoot, we can't win. And I'm going to make a couple of changes, I think. We're going to go... Do I wait another 10 with the centre-halves? I think I probably do. Yeah, do you know what? I'll give it 10 more minutes. Then we'll make the changes. Well, City are taking liberties already. They're taking off star players at the hour mark. I guess because we've not had a shot, they think there's no threat, which is arguably a good theory. We're going to take Sturgeon off for Mepham again. Need both of them in midweek. I'm also going to take off Reggion, who's on a booking for Lloyd Roberts. Not sure if he's ever played in the Prem. No, he hasn't. This will be his debut. He's played for Exeter and Cluj previously. I will take off Solanke, but my only option... I think is to either bring on O'Flaherty and push Oli Berm forward, which I think I'm going to do. And we might just go a flat 5-4-1 because I think that's what the player suits. So we're going to go O'Flaherty on for Solanke. Up front, out of these two, I think Veron would be better. He is. So he'll go as the advance forward. And then what we'll do tactically, as boring as it is, is we'll try and do damage limitation mode. We'll go... Defensive wing backs on defensive duties, and we'll put the wingers into the wide midfield areas. 
and just do what we were doing if we were time wasting at one nil up most games because I think that'll work better. Aragon's done really well for an hour, so let's give Bob McGinn his debut as well. I know he's played one before. He is a left footer naturally and a bit more of a ball winner. So do you know what? We'll drop him into a defensive duty there. We're not going to look for the overlap because we've not got anyone willing to do it. We're not going to raise the tempo. I don't think there's any point here in doing anything other than trying to keep it respectable. 5-4-1, that's the way we're going to set up. It feels disappointing, but this is sort of where we are as a club. We've got to keep a good shape. We've got to keep the score down because that goal difference could be crucial at the end of the year. It's very similar to those sides in 8th or 9th and 10th. And it could be the thing that gets us Europa Conference football. You never know. So with just over 15 to go, I will make the final sub. And it's going to be Damsgaard because of the players that could be on the bench on New Year's Day, he's the most versatile. He can cover five positions. So I'm going to bring on, probably will be Leonardo just for a few minutes with Ron out wide because then at least we've got a threat of scoring because we've got our best striker on the pitch. And if nothing else, we might nick one on the counter as Mark Steele's got a goal kick and O'Flaherty apparently is impressing a right wing back. Not sure how he's got a 7.1 in 10 minutes without us seeing a highlight. As Van der Ven gets it into Ben Seguir. Good switch of play towards Foden, but Roberts wins the header. Can I just say now, imagine we equalise. Veron gets it forward, good interception. Don't think there's much risk of it. We're still yet to have a shot, I believe. As Bernardo loses it to Leonardo. And Fernandes goes back to Rollins. Big switch of play. Leonardo chases. It's a little bit aimless, that one. And there's not really much support for Leonardo. He looks incredibly isolated up there. As Solvakin gets it in the middle, he's come on for Rodri. Haaland in, was he onside? Let's hope not, because it's a classic finish. And the Premier League's top scorer is looking to do it again. Manchester City's Haaland is offside. The one thing I do want to say about this save, which is really interesting to me, is when I look at the South End and the Luton saves, when I look at the earlier stages in the head coach, we often relied on a super goal scoring machine up front. We've never had a tactic this year that's just been defensively solid and nothing else. We've always relied on goals. I find it really strange that here we've not had a goal scorer. We're really struggling to score and we're still flying because of clean sheets galore as Roland steps in. What a journey from Barrytown United to the Etihad here. Back to the centre half who is currently the man with the assist for the match winner. Though Bernardo's trying to change that. He's got Haaland with him. Goes back to Samuel and Solbakken. McGinn slides in, that could have been a red if he wasn't careful, but Haaland releases Doku, and again we await VAR, but that looked on to me that time. 2-0 would not flatter City in the slightest, it would be still a good effort for us, but it doesn't count, it's 1-0. Now the question is, as we head to stoppage time, I'm going to go attacking, let's just have a go. We won't change the shape, but we'll change the mentality, as Haaland's free kick goes just over. With 30 seconds to go, that's probably it. I am thrilled to keep that to 1-0. With the players we had out, with lots of youngsters featuring, we've done ourselves proud. The boys are happy. It's damage limitation at its finest. And defensively, again, so solid, even in a slightly different shape there. Everton have managed to draw one all with Newcastle. They are now four points and one place below us. Phil Roberts is their star player. He's a wonder kid and he's very close. To getting into the England team now but they have still got a lot of very good players as well with Ralph Hasenhutl in charge. Ismail Asar has come in but they've still got Anana, Ghana, Ben Godfrey, David Ray has joined, Bramthwaite, Fikayo Tamori's in there. I'm looking at Brozier on the bench as well. Carboni I definitely managed somewhere last year, can't remember what club it was at. It's all pretty interesting because they've been a very good side in FM this year and we're going to have our first team. They should be having to rotate a little. I'm intrigued to see how it pans out. Let's go and get ahead to the next game though. Tuesday night, New Year's Day, and it's Everton who will be hosting. Hopefully, these boys will be fresh. Well, the transfer window is open again on the day of the Everton game, and I was going to come back at kickoff time and show you these links that the media have made with players, but Mike Phelan has made an offer this morning, so I'm going to have to do it now. Firstly, we've been linked with Roy Luffied. He is a 21-year-old Irishman from Manchester City. Tell you what, he's not bad at all. I would take him at the football club. We also got Caden Young, who is 23 now and developed pretty well. He would be an interesting addition. 
And Yasser Espria, who at 26, again has become a decent player, but he's possibly the weakest of the three overall, or the least exciting. Spurs are being linked with Wonder Kids, who look pretty sensational, I've got to be honest with you. Still showing the golfing class between us and the top sides on paper. But let's get to the big news of the morning, which is that Mike Phelan has wasted no time at all in getting offers in. He's also accepted a loan offer from Falkirk for Karen Tao, who is a 21-year-old striker that's okay, but not going to make it. But is this a youth player or a senior player he's made a bid for? Offer made for Ferret Aslan is a senior player. It is a 21-year-old right winger from Genk for 24 million quid. Now, we do lack a little bit of quality in those areas. We've had Siganov out injured long term. Bron as a backup is getting weaker compared to the squad. Damsgaard, I like to play as the extra man in the middle. This could be the missing piece of the jigsaw if he's as good as his ability and potential suggest. It's another one that's a good profile for the club that they can make a profit on. But what is he like? Ferret Aslan. I'll tell you what, I'll take it. He's not a complete player. And he's maybe not the type of player I'd normally rely on. But he's electric quick. He's got flair. He can dribble with the ball. Finishing aside in terms of attributes reminds me a bit of Theo Walcott when he was young in the game. But as an under-21s Turkey international with Europa League and Belgian League experience, he is someone who, as an impact player, would definitely be a great addition to the squad. So let's see if that one can get done. We are just one or two players short in terms of squad depth, and youngsters who can get better and become stars, like this one here, will make Mike Phelan look even better. Well, fitness test time ahead of the game, and Senesi is still not back from his broken ribs, but everyone else is just about there, albeit Fernandez is not being recommended with a start after a hamstring injury. He has had a couple of Inspire games this year, but has generally been a little bit quiet, so I might just keep him on the bench. But it will depend how fit everyone else is. It's a 4-2-3-1 for Everton. They're expected to rotate a bit, albeit there's a few tired defenders there. And again, we're nowhere near selling out, which is a problem financially. Of course, we are in a much better position than we were last year. And that extra 30 million or so should be helpful. But for now, let's go and see what 11 we can pick up today. Because I'm feeling we're going to have to change this quite a bit. We'll go with the assistance 11 for now. We'll come back to decide what we've picked. Well, the big news for this game is that I have decided to leave Fernandez out and Brassia doesn't have to start for the first time in ages because we've got both Mepham and Casali back alongside Sturgeu. What it does mean, though, is that we are a little weaker in the wide areas. And you can see from the reports here, those wide midfield positions are where we're probably the weakest and maybe where we've got the least excitement in the team. So if we can get Fernandez back fit and then get that youngster in, could be good signs for the future. For now though, it's nearly all changed from the last game, so I'll just run through the 11. It is Mark Steele between the sticks again, it keeps his place as the only fit keeper. Casali and Mepham come into the starting lineup alongside Sturgeu in the back three. Aaron's and Doigan at wing backs with Scott and Adams in in midfield. And then Siganov comes in to join Damsgaard out wide with Marcos Leonardo up front. The good news is, I know Rollins and Burnie youngsters, but it is eight senior outfield players on the bench. One youth goalkeeper, which is a necessity, but otherwise we're as strong as we can be. Rollins is improving and getting close to that sort of Premier League level. I'm not sure Burn as a wonder kid's going to make it anyway. But for us, in the short term, it's all about Everton. and We should have the fresher team today. Well, Everton have made the decision to only make two changes. Now, I've got to go and look through the opposition instructions here because I've noticed this and I mentioned it in the South End save as well. There are loads of games over the festive period where there's a really heavy swing in the score lines because teams are either making loads of changes and putting out a weak team or they're putting out a tired team, as Everton are here. Four outfield players not in full condition, but then pretty decent players on the bench that they're not even featuring. So it does leave a little bit of a surprise and it does ask a few questions, but we're going to go and get into it. The first half at home to Everton. And we're hoping that big gamble we took at City and basically giving up a game there will really benefit us today. We've seen other managers do it in the past and hopefully it'll pay off for us here. As Tamori plays into Renan, we've got to see off the early stages from Everton and Mepham does just that with a big clearance. But again, Leonardo a little bit isolated up front. We're not quite on the front foot yet as Anana gets in. Oh, that's not a good start. Well, very much different to the last episode. and. 
I know we came into this off two draws against pretty poor opposition. We weren't in great form. But you saw us beat Chelsea and Newcastle. This is going the opposite. And for all my talk about Everton not resting people, they've made the right decision because they're 1-0 up. We'll still have a go later on, of course, but we know that goals are hard to come by for this team. So let's encourage with half an hour gone and see if we can find a goal threat because at the moment... We're not offering a lot going forward, and we've seen no attacking highlights at all. We could have done with that young winger off the bench today, couldn't we? Fernandez will have to do, as Gray cuts in from the left here. We cannot afford to go two down. We very seldom do. Is this going to turn into the Palace game? Because the last month and a half, yes, the unbeaten run was pretty good, but we have dropped off a bit. Two draws, a couple of defeats now. It's not been a great month and we may be just getting back to reality, which will be the top end of the bottom or the bottom half of the top half, to be honest. So Aaron's gives the ball away and Casali will get there. The new look back three today as well. As Aaron's picks it up in midfield for Leonardo. Can we find our way back into it? On a stroke of half time, Leonardo runs through and he wins the penalty. Individual magic from the Brazilian. A brilliant run. And Anana, who scored the goal for Everton, he's signaling dive, but I don't think so. It looked like contact to me. Does the referee agree? You bet he does. Penalty awarded. Left-footed. Who's going to take it? I think it's Siganov normally. Now, we've seen him miss one this season already on camera. But he doesn't miss that. Through David Raya and into the top corner. And on a stroke of half-time. It's Bournemouth 1, Everton 1. And I think that's his first goal back from long-term injury. Well, there we are. Back in the game. And you can see the expected goals prior to that penalty was 0.08. We'd offered next to nothing from open play. We're going to pump the fist. We're going to say, get your revenge on Everton. Did they beat us last time as well? There you go. Might just be a bit of a bogey club. You can clearly see that Damsgaard is the weakest on the pitch. Why Leonardo so poor, I don't know. He went on a brilliant run to win the penalty. I'm going to make the first sub with Fernandez though. Aaron's hasn't been great either, but I'm going to leave it another 10 or 15. Because the rest of these guys won't have started last week or on Saturday even, and should be fresh as a result, as Adams plays it to Mepham. He goes for the switch of play. Doig, not going to do much with that. It's really poor in possession. Not like us at all. And I talked about the wonder kid Phil Roberts, didn't I? What a finish from him in the corner. And for the second time in three home games, we've let him more than one goal. And that is definitely a warning sign for me. There's a lot of shade to the Palace game in this. So with 25 to go, I think we're going to make changes. I do need to ask questions of Tyler Adams as well because nothing's changed from last year and he's still got exceptional natural fitness but seems to be getting a lot more tired this time around. So he's going to come off for Fernandez, who isn't really that fit himself to be honest but might have to just do the job here. On the right it's going to be Siganov off for Veron. Up front it's going to be Solanke for Leonardo. And we've got one more, which will be Max Aaron's off for Ollie Byrne. 25 remaining. We're gambling with all the subs. And we're going to try and encourage these boys. It's been one of our poorest performances for a long time. And so far, the gamble against City has not paid off. It will be one win in six if we lose this one as well. And even if we draw it the same. So definitely a few causes for concern. And defensively, I hate to say it, we've not been the same since the keeper's been out. Karnazeki's a key man for us as Vron switches to Doig. Can we do a rare feat of scoring more than one in a game though? No. Doig down the left with a chance to cross. A point would be a decent result and Solanke has missed a sitter. You may have caught me half celebrating there already. Not to be. We're 2-1 down. We've gone attacking. We're chasing the game. But that chance is just eluding us and I'm afraid... It's going to be back-to-back -back defeats, and it's going to be four without a win. Not a good sign. We probably should have got a result. Individual mistakes have cost us, and defensively, as I mentioned at the start, we cannot afford to switch off. So we're drifting back to mid-table now. I mean, look at City, lost 4-1 at Burnley. Some of these festive results are bonkers in FM, honestly. We've now got back-to-back -back Brighton, who have just beaten Wolves, so they'll be in confident form. And for us now, if you look at it, it's not ideal, is it? Big defeat against Palace and now four without a win. Draws against Hull and Leicester, defeats against City and Everton. And a couple of big games coming up. I really want to progress in a cup. I'm going to go strong for it. The only good sign, I guess, is that Fernandez will be back fit. 
And if we can get this winger in, it might be a very different story because he adds a bit of youth and genuine dynamism out wide and a level of pace that we just haven't got in the team and haven't had since we've been here. So we'll wait and see if that comes off or not. But for now, we are going to be back for transfer deadline day, which is at the end of January. Mike Phelan has already signalled his intent to be busy this month. The last two games are Villa and then Forest. So we'll show one of those, probably Forest in addition to deadline day before moving in towards the end of the season. We have a look at the squad. There are still a few wanted. Josh Doig, transfer listed by request for 68 million. A few Saudi clubs sniffing around there. Tyler Adams into his 30s, wanted by Real Madrid. Siganov wanted by Antwerp and Marseille. Is that deal with the right winger going to end up being a swap with the experienced Siganov moving on? We'll wait and see. For now though, if you did enjoy this one, as we drift down the Premier League over the last month or so, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. I've just noticed, by the way, I was devastated by that defeat to Palace. They're in fifth. They're absolutely flying, so maybe I shouldn't have been so upset. If you want to stay up to date and see how the rest of the month goes and what Mike Phelan equips us with for the rest of the season, then please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We're going to have to find a way to tighten up defensively again. We're still without Karnazeki for five more weeks. Now Skipper Senesi has been out long term and physically is absolutely shot now. So it's going to be a bit of a changing of the guard. It's going to be difficult for us to maintain standards, but hopefully we'll be able to do so. In the meantime though, before we return with deadline day on Wednesday, we will be back tomorrow with Southend United, a very big video coming up there as we battle at the bottom of the table in that one. There's also a link in the eye above to our guides and experiments, the latest one that came out on Sunday relating to injuries which was a little bit of fun. And of course you can also find links to the Twitch channel and the football podcast, both with regular content. But thank you very much for watching, your support is massively appreciated. And I'll see you back here next time for deadline day and hopefully to introduce that winger who should be a bit of a gem.